I love that wine. So this is now the third and final attempt at bringing you the second part of the wines from Naked. The reason being is that the first time the audio was off, the second time my Z50 for the first time has had massive autofocus failure. I'd put it like there to get the shot straight and it just wouldn't come off of the wine. Understandable I suppose. So let's get to it. So yeah if you want to see the first of these um, which is the first one in my new shed, the wine shed, the wine cave, whatever we want to call it, uh, then have a look up here. If I remember I'll put a little card and you'll be able to see that. Uh, they were mainly the Spanish wines from Naked. I have now got a lovely mixture of a Spanish wine, two uh, Italians and two French wines. And this is mainly in the spirit of lockdown wine still, of me uh, getting like the concierge case and other wines to kind of keep up to date, refine your palate um, and just have a bit more varied wine than the same old wines that we were buying from a day to day for our sort of drinking, which was fine when we we're going to restaurants and being surprised by lots of different wines all the time. But when you're in, um, I mean, yeah, when you're in all the time, little did I know when I started this that we'd now be coming out of our third lockdown and some countries seem to be going into their third lockdown. But anyway, here we are. So I have my trusty uh, British Airways glasses that I bought from the British Airways sale, which it has now been over a year since I have been on a British Airways long haul flight of the type that they would give you one of these glasses. And uh, yeah, so let's get to it. I'm going to start with the Italians. And the reason for that is that they are the lightest ones. And I've not got very much left of it now. And so, you know, this is my last and final chance to have this take without going and buying the wines again. And I had to buy the French wine, one of the French wines again, uh, because of the other takes going wrong. And I'm now on the last legs. So, I'm going to start with the Montepul Channel d'Abruzzo, which I do believe uh, seemed like the lightest of the... Italians when I had it last and I've got a more or less a serving level which is good not uh, sorry a tasting level not a serving amount which I've done a few times now this is uh, it's 13% it's quite light for a multiple channel and if we go into Vivino I've already been in to Vivino a few times so hopefully I will be able to get to it very quickly Yes, so we have the Montepulciano del Bruzzo from Christian Patats. Now, the wines I chose here were all because uh, they had interesting monologists who were doing different things. Um, the Spanish one especially reminds me of sort of wines that I used to drink when I lived in Spain. Um, but we'll get to that. <sighs> when I'm choosing an Italian, I'm not any expert in Italian wines at all. And... But, you know, typically Montepul Channel and Puglia are the areas that I will, uh, sorry, the denominations that I will kind of, uh, well, Primitivo and Montepul Channel are two of the wines that I will typically choose, though not uh, exhaustively. But yeah, let's get to the Montepul Channel di Abruzzo. Now, uh, it's 3.7 on Vivino with 243 ratings, so quite a, a lot. It's a 97% match for me. I don't know what my match is. But I'll put my username for Vivino down there. So if you want to go and see the weird and wonderful variety of wines that I have. £7.86 based on Vivino users. Um, which is, you know, it's good value wine. Um, especially for... I mean, this has now been in my shed for a while. And it's remained a remarkably complex wine. It, I'm really liking this. Now, interestingly, it's bold. is a lot less than I'd expect from an Italian with 13 degrees of alcohol. But what do they say? Well, they say the oak, vanilla, and chocolate, which is definitely there. The dark fruit, blackberry and plum, definitely there. Cherry, strawberry, and red fruit. Again, I'm sorry, I haven't brought my um, glasses full of fruits, but it's definitely the darker ones. The lighter ones, I think they're there as well. Earthy leather smoke. 
there's definitely something in there of, of leather and earth but there is always Italian I do love it a good Italian wine has kind of that presence of of, of, of Italy that is um, it's quite remarkable um, pepper aniseed and there's definitely the aniseed now I'm picking up the that aniseed is there it's, it's lovely I don't know about the cinnamon and the pepper there's obviously uh, cheese cream oil now I did go through this with a friend of mine who is a master of wine a uh, pretty high level now every time I check he's got another level but um, yeah I mean the, the only thing we can think that the cheese and cream is coming from is the concept of picking up malolactic uh, tones but you really kind of expect those to be kind of butter uh, toffee popcorn kind of you know pleasant notes um, I mean and he's a cheese lover he likes these kind of cheeses I mean the cheese that he one of the cheeses he likes in Spain uh, my brother-in-law once put in the microwave and I nearly threw it away um, it was that bad um, torta de casar oh, horrendous stuff I mean uh, I'm surprised it didn't like crawl off but um, still cheese I don't I don't really pick those flavors up in red wine now maybe there's something missing in my wine palette um, let me know if you think so uh, obviously you know, not extensively <laughs> be kind um, but yeah I mean the cheese thing not getting it uh, raisin and prune and black raisin there is definitely especially because this has now been in my shed for a while um, it's kind of nice sort of 7 to 12 degrees in my shed um, <laughs> Over in that corner, even with the heater on, this corner doesn't really get much above 12 degrees. No, definitely not above 15, which would be um, kind of the maximum you'd really want to keep wine. Uh, red wine anyway in the cellar. Uh, so we've got raisin prune. Violet, eh, not getting that. Uh, but there is a floral. There's something a bit flowery in there. Um, again, you know, I just don't drink enough wines anymore to be able to have that refined pal palate where I can just go, that flavour is this. Uh, orange and lime, hmm, it's definitely a bit of a citrusy thing going on. Tomato, I, I've, I've never really been, I've never sort of gone that is tomato in a wine, but I do get where it's coming from. Um, there's pineapple stone fruit. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not sure about the pineapple, but there's definitely the stone fruit. Um, but the tropical thing, no, I mean, for me, tropical is you know, full on. Um, tropical fruit is just like, you know, big fruit, but bigger still which I, you know, this is very much a European product um, so I like this a lot yep spicy earthy yep needs a good hour eh, probably um, gorgeous deep red color it's not as dark as I was expecting but it is nice uh, licorice oak firing I don't know if they're firing but they're they're ticking over they're, they're firing the odd pot shot which is good yeah I, I, I mean I can't I really can't fault this wine it is just really really nice so let's move on to the Primitivo. Now I do like Primitivos, I really do. And in case I didn't do the Christian Patat, there is the Christian Patat. And I hope that um, the multiple channel the Abruzzo, sorry, and this is Christian's um, Primitivo. Now I do hope that the focus is still on because I'm not going there's definitely not going to be a fourth take of this. Now, as you can see, there's so many takes. This is the last of the Primitivo. Now, first time round, I preferred the Primitivo to the Montecul channel. It's only 13%, which is not as full-bodied as I would expect from a Primitivo. They're almost like they're swapped round. But it is a very, very nice very easily drunk Primitivo. So let's go over to here and see what... 3.8, so you see it is rated higher than 3.7 but it's only an 87% match for me. Interesting, I don't know when Tinder has um, suddenly made its way into Vivino. It's much bigger on the bold, on the taste characteristics, which I'd take with a pinch of salt. Um, oak, vanilla, chocolate, blackberry, dark fruits, yeah, cherry, strawberry, it's like first three flavours are exactly the same. Uh, so there's the leather and smoke, earthy. Then goes the pepper, coriander and thyme. Interesting. One of the things I love about good Italian wines is that they do capture this character of the land that I, 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 uh, I, 
yeah, I need to investigate a bit more. It's definitely there. Um, and it's funny because, you know, I, I've even, but I, yeah, I suppose, yeah, it's, I don't know what it is. But the cheese yeast and cream, no, there's no nasty infections going on here. Um, raisin cranberry, dried cranberry, not the, uh, prune. Yep, there's a bit of that going on. Tomato celery. It's interesting. There is that kind of, I don't know if it's celery, but there is that, uh, or tomato, um, but there is that vegetal thing going on. Um, toast and almond, there is a bit nutty. There is a bit nutty. Yep. Good value for money, it definitely is. Interesting to see Vivino users using abbreviations from the internet. Nice. I, I always thought they'd be like snooty, kind of, yeah. Usual wine people, sorry for if that's, but you know, it isn't the most you know, up to date industry. Going strong, fruity aromas, yep, Sp uh, spicy haddock, I don't care what you had it with. Um, it's good for the price, I guess, not too deep. Plum there, caramel. Mm. I like this, I, I really do. I mean, the two, uh, I definitely, I mean, I, I won't be buying any more of these because. I have moved on and this was, you know, did what it had to do for me. There's nothing wrong. I prefer a bigger Primitivo as well. So let's move on to Tomás Buendía. And buenas noches to you. This is a Tempranillo from 2019 and it's from Uclis, which I think is a Madrid wine. Now this is an interesting wine. Um, a lot of the, so I grew up in Spain and a lot of the wines that we had then, uh, so if you mentioned one of the first Guias del Pinin that I, uh, that I bought, the Pinin was 20 years ago. And so I grew up drinking a lot of the kind of earthy wines that were made, uh, you know, locally. And they're not great, obviously, but some of them are very nice. And the same in France, I loved going down to the cooperative uh, and, and the same in Italy, having these like local wines in the carafes, fantastic. They have these things, and then they have some big bodied wines in Spain that we use to counterbalance some of the lighter stuff, and, and I can drink those all day long. And this was what I was hoping would promise it, and it does. It's, um, it's, it's got all of those wonderful fruitiness. The fruit is astonishing. It is. It's an interesting wine, and it's got the alcohol to pull through. It is 14% alcohol. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's kind of... Uh, so when I got the Penin guide, I, I loved... And I'll dig out which year it is, hopefully, and put it along there if I can still find it, but I don't know where I've got it. But it was around... Maybe nine, in the 90s. And what I loved about it is that all the wines, the top 20 wines in there were all kind of, I don't know, 15, 20, even 100 euros. There was like Vega Sicilia in there, which, yeah, of course it's nice. It's throwing a euros it was i don't know 200 180 euros then but there was vinyas del vero which hopefully i'll get on to um and they had made i i don't know if it was a tempranillo and ah, my memory is not what it used to be but it was five euros 50 and it was an astonishing wine and it made it to the top 10 quite rightly so and this is an astonishing wine it's a screw top it's lovely i could drink this if i had to because <laughs> i'm a very spoiled person all day long, but let's see what the Vivinos say. The Vivinos say it has a four, which is quite high, but it's only 16 ratings. And it's only a 50% match for me, which is interesting. Now, this was, I think, the cheapest of all of these wines. Um, and it's telling me here a Berdejo, which is not correct. Why is it trying to tell me a Berdejo? Uh, no. No, it's not a Verdejo. Tempranillo, 2019. Okay, this wine has not yet been rated. Now, I'm going to... I've been very bad and very sloppy. I have not been rating the wines that I've been doing, even though I've just been taking out of Vivino and not putting back. But there are no tastings or anything in here. So I'm going to go and fill this in for them because I think this is a very, very interesting wine that deserves a bit more love than it is getting um but yeah so what does it have well it's it's got that big berry 
There are some floral, there's the violets that people love to put in here. It's almost like a, there is a herbaly thing, there's like a lavender, and I don't want to say that in a bad sense, um, but there is something really nice going on in the background in here. Is there a bit of vanilla? I think so. It's hard to say because the fruit, the fruit is kind of big, but I think there is a bit of vanilla in here. And yeah, I mean, this is a really nice wine. I, it, it's, it, it really is, I, I, I do like this. As you can see, right. So now we're off to France. Now, Cazenave. We like Cazenave. Uh, it's a vin rouge biologique from Bordeaux. It's only 2019. It is 14% alcohol. And you will see in a second, it's quite surprising. It's very dark. Now, the thing I love about Bordeaux, I was very spoilt. I got a lot of very nice Bordeaux when I was younger and I love that big Bordeaux flavor, but it comes at a price. And so often I have been given wines that are from much cheaper bandings of the 15, 20 pounds, um, and even as low as 10 pounds in the uh, typical retail places in the UK. And I have to say they are disappointing a lot of the time. Now, what's interesting about these is they punch way above their weight. And the reason I say they're disappointing is that a lot of the cheaper ones are just too light. I mean, for me, a Bordeaux, I and mean, once you've had a really nice big Bordeaux, the, the, the sort of, the, you know, the lighter ones just don't do it for me. Um, now these are kind of big, they're not as refined, I have to warn you, they're not as refined as, they haven't got that silky smoothness of the more expensive ones, but then, guess what? They don't cost as much as the silky smooth ones. This one is 1157 It's a huge difference between the price of the silky smooth and these, but they don't disappoint. Um, it's definitely bold, tannic. Uh, it's got a very dry, which is weird. Um, and they say it's acidic. Um, I, I, I'll pass on the acidic, as you've probably seen from some of my other videos. It's only 3.7, which I think is a bit stingy. I would give it more. Um, I've not had a lot of Bordeaux, and what I've had did not impress me, but I really like this. And I think that reflects um, what I would say about this. So, there are not very many reviews of this. There's only 28 ratings. But what people did say is that there is oak. There's a bit. Cherry and red fruit, of course. Smoke. There's definitely smoke. Now, cassis. This is very interesting. Of course it has cassis. Interestingly, Thomas Buendias has a little bit of... Well, you, you can't say cassis because the French will get upset. Um, if you ever studied your uh, competition law, the Dijon de Cassis case uh, is one of the biggest pieces of case law in um, protective uh, protection of the alcohol industry which is kind of rife in in uh, in most parts of the world in Europe is no different but there is definitely cassis going on in here that is no bad thing I haven't had cassis for ages aging notes interesting well I mean I have had this in my cellar my cav my shed for a while and it has aged very well it's sherified beautifully um, this is a great wine I mean especially for 11, 12 pounds. Dry, full flavoured, beautiful, red berries, juicy, velvet. Didn't taste any velvet, but they never, never, yeah, we won't go there. Leave it. That is a great wine. Now, I do believe I had poured myself a rather large glass of the um, Chateau Grand Verdou which is there. Now, I don't know if I give you good enough view of the Kazanaf, but there we have it. I will do some other ones. But yeah, the Chateau de Verdoux is a very nice wine. We're gonna neck back the, I'm sorry for this. This is 
really shouldn't do this, especially I think that was the last. Oh no, there is a bit more Kazanov. I will enjoy that another day. Let's do the Verdu Justice. Now, since the first taste, the tastings that went wrong, I have bought myself another bottle of the Verdu. And I have to say, it's not as... <laughs> I don't remember... It's not as good as I remember. The, the Now, I don't know whether I was just mistaken the first time, but I remembered this being better than the Kazanov, and then when I tested them again, the Kazanov, I kind of liked more. But that just could be many different things going on. So, this is, it's not as nasal as the Kesnev, but it is a great wine. It's only 3.7 on Vivino, which again, I think stingy. £16.72. It's a match of 4%. <laughs> I don't think the matching is very good yet. I mean, this is not as good as, I mean, in my local deli, which is quite expensive, there are £25 and there's a £25 bottle of Bordeaux that's silky smooth. I think it's about 28 now they've put it up and you could drink it all day long. But again, I suppose there is there is a price jump, right? I mean, so we will forgive it that it is still only a 15 and a bit wine rather than a 20, 25 pound bottle of wine. But yeah, I mean, it, it's it punches higher than its weight in so many ways, but not in others, I suppose. It's the thing. So dark fruit, plum, blackberry, definitely all day long. Oak, vanilla, cedar. The cedar is interesting. This, yeah. Pepper, green herbs, savory. I'm not sure. There's definitely a herbiness going on. I, I don't know what the savory is supposed to be. Cherry, raspberry, red cherry, of course. Earthy. There is an earthiness that I like. Bell pepper. There's something vegetable in this, and, and people will say the tomato and the bell pepper, and I, and I know where they're going, but I'm not sure that is the vegetable that is there. Again, comment, I'd love to know what that vegetable or vegetal note is. There's one mention of cheese yeasty notes. Thoroughly enjoyed this really tasty Bordeaux from Naked Wines. I'm not surprised. It's got a decent intensity to the nose and then plenty of black fruit, oak, vanilla. Yeah. Uh, after an hour in the decanter, the tannins had started to add completely. I don't know, but this has been decanting. Uh, well, this has been open and, and breathing. I haven't decanted it. Uh, yep. I mean, yeah, I, I, I think it's safe to say that if I were a French wine drinker, There's a bit of a wind. <laughs> There's a bit of a wind getting up, and I can tell you, if I was sleeping in this, let's call it a cabin, I would be crapping myself by now. But I'm not. Um, if I were a red wine, uh, sorry, a French wine drinker, um, and regularly drank French wines, I would say that I'd probably have the Casenave and the Grand Verdu in my regular drinking substituting some of the more typical Spanish wines which having said that I've got a very interesting I did a wine tasting with some customers of Spanish wines which is very interesting and that's coming up next but yeah I thoroughly enjoyed all of these wines I encourage you to uh, in the lockdown get onto Naked Wines if you haven't already it took me way too long to get there and they are thoroughly enjoyable there is nothing here that I could not drink or if it was served to me in a uh, dinner, not that I've been to a dinner for a while, that I would scoff at. All very good. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it's useful for you. I will get on to Vivino and start filling it in and put in the link. And I'll see you in the next one.
Wow. <clears throat> it is cold in here, but luckily I've got wine. And wine like this, which kind of warms you up a lot. Nice. 